Hi, my name is Mark Townsend, and I'm running for Selectman here in Carver. My wife Maureen and I have lived in Carver since 1984. We've raised our four children here, we both love this town, and I'm running for Selectman because I am committed to helping the town and want to work as part of a team that is focused on finding solutions to the challenges we have in front of us. I believe I have the experience to help the town deal with the many challenges it faces. I am currently a member of the Carver Finance Committee and was elected by the members of the committee as its vice chairman. I am also a member of the Carver Housing Authority, a member of the Carver Knights of Columbus, have been active in multiple Carver Youth Sports Leagues, and was part of the original group that built the Carver Playground next to the library. I have also run my own business and insurance agency since 1991. I know what it's like to meet deadlines, to balance budgets, and to work cooperatively with others to get things done. I believe these are all skills that will serve me well on the Board of Selectmen. My wife and I chose to live and raise our children in Carver for many of the same reasons that you probably did. We were drawn by the rural character and the beauty of the town, the small town atmosphere. It's a place where you know your neighbors, where you look out for one another, and I want my children and your children to be able to live in a place that maintains those values. Carver faces a number of challenges, though. We are a small town with a limited amount of commercial development. That means that the residents bear a large amount of the tax burden. On the Finance Committee, I have been a supporter of the town's fiscal and long-term planning policies put in place in the past few years. Those policies have enabled us to build the new Carver Elementary School and the new fire station, as well as to put a plan in place for the new police station, with only the school requiring a debt exclusion. One of my priorities on the board will be to continue those sound financial policies. We face other challenges here in town, though. We need to work together to move forward on a plan for the Council on Aging. We have a continuing opioid problem here in town, and we need to work to solve that. We have lost teachers and staff in our schools, and we need to work together on a plan to help solve those issues. None of these issues are simple, and they won't be solved overnight. We need to work together as a town, and as a board to find answers. That's why I believe my experience is so important. I pledge to you to listen to all sides of the issue and all the people in town before I make decisions or draw conclusions. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this and I thank Area 58 for helping to put this together. Again, my name is Mark Townsend and I ask for your vote for Selectman on April 28th. Thank you. I'm Sarah Hewins, and I'm running for re-election as your selectman here in Carver. I served for 15 years as your conservation agent. For 10 years, I was an elected member of planning board, and for the past nine years, I've served as one of your selectmen. For over 20 years, I've been serving you and trying always to do the right thing for you. Currently, I'm on the board of directors at the South Shore Community Action Council that provides services to low-income families and seniors. I'm a co-founder and former volunteer executive director of the Young People's Alliance of Carver, otherwise known as YPAC, a nonprofit after-school program for children's youth that involves the whole community with a goal of drug abuse prevention and a focus on learning life skills. I'm also the volunteer reader for the Tuesday Toddler Story Hour at our public library and have been for 22 years. And I'm the chair of the Municipal Playground Committee that built Carver's first community playground. I also wrote the Successful Community Preservation Fund grant to upgrade that playground in 2016. As your selectman, I spearheaded residential curbside trash and recycling pickup for 50% off the going price. I helped to lower, lower the water rate for seniors in one of our manufactured home communities and saved the town 34% on our streetlight bill by negotiating the purchase from NSTAR for $1 of our streetlights. I wrote the Successful Community Preservation Act grant for $2 million for new recreational fields at our new elementary school. As your conservation agent, I helped to obtain another $2 million in grants for conservation and outdoor recreation and protected over 600 acres of land from tax negative development. As a planning board member, I had a 100% success rate in permitting appropriate businesses to broaden our tax base while also preserving our rural character and preserving our environment. There's still a lot to be done. We need a new police station that our police department needs and deserves. 
we need a feasibility study for a new council on aging and a new council on aging that gives our seniors what they need and what they deserve. Sometimes public service means standing up alone for what you believe in and what you believe is right. I've done this time and time again. My mother was a missionary in Japan after World War II, before I was born. She is the one who taught me what it means to be a public servant. I've moved over 30 times before my husband and I settled down in Carver 26 years ago. I'm not leaving again because I love this town, and that's why I'm asking for your vote for Selectman on Saturday, April 28th, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Carver Middle High School. I'm Sarah Hewins, and thank you for listening. Hi. My name is Cornelius Shea, and I am running for my first term on the Carver Board of Selectmen. For the past 15 years, I have lived on Plymouth Street in Carver with my beautiful and talented wife, Kim, and our 11-year-old son, CJ. We were drawn to Carver for the beautiful open spaces, rural, and historic character of the town, and the warmth and character of the people here. We have seen many changes to this small rural and agricultural community over the past few years. We have seen good times and bad ones. We have always come together as friends and neighbors to support and help each other in times of need. It is this small town atmosphere of support and friendship I wish to continue and help foster in the years ahead. <clears throat> Over the past few years, the larger differences in our political spectrum have created vast divisions in our community, in what I believe to be in a larger sense, our family. Family is more than blood. It is acceptance, understanding, sacrifice, and loyalty through shared heartache and joy that keeps us together. It is difficult at times for us to recognize and respect the differing views in our community as only adding to the whole of who we are as a town. But it is, it is this, these very differences that push us to be better and stronger society. I am running for selectmen to help ensure all views are respected with that, I hope to help improve the quality of life for all the residents of the town of Carver, to foster openness and fairness in a local government that should put its citizens, especially those least able to care for themselves, first. I am running to remind people that their government is their voice, and the citizens of Carver are the bedrock upon which our town stands. We need to establish long-term goals to ensure that the people of our town, who have worked and given so much of themselves, will have a continued future without fear or worry that what they have worked so hard for and invested so much in is not taken unfairly or unjustly for any reason. In order to do this, we must increase the commercial and industrial base in Carver in a manner that is consistent with our open space bylaws and master plan. It should be done in ways that do not further burden the residents of our community. It is my belief that with targeted tax incentives, we can strengthen our commercial and industrial base, while at the same time establish more sustainable residential growth. We can balance out loopholes various entities are using to circumvent the town's bylaws and get ahead of the curve for the future development, while at the same time, retaining the beautiful open spaces and historic nature of Carver. We need to rein in predatory development practices and short-term goals that have potential for long-term negative consequences. We need to establish a viable tax base that will not force people out of their homes due to rising taxes and increased costs, nor under the guise of urban development. The best way to avoid problems is to be proactive heading off or finding solutions to issues before they become real trouble. We need to embrace and advocate for policies that better support our schools, the Council of Aging, our citizens, and our town employees. With the new police building on the horizon, we need to reinforce and expand our police department to appropriate levels to aid in the ongoing battle against the scourge of opioids in Carver. This can be furthered through the broadening and advancement of community-based programs. Carver should evolve and encourage a more sustainable financial perspective for our schools and senior community. We should support 
and inspire the citizens of our community to have a vested interest in Carver, from volunteering on boards and committees, through an open vetting process, and also by supporting resident preference for employment opportunities. We need to keep our community in our schools in the form of teachers, custodians, and food service personnel, as well as furthering a more robust recreation program. By investing in our community and ourselves, we can better our town through more transparent governmental processes that best reflect our individuality as a small farming community. Our goal needs to be the establishment of policies that promote long-term sustainable growth and not quick fixes to just get us through another year. By promoting the establishment of a more secure capital outlay policy, we can prevent any future tax overrides or levies that put us further behind our long-term goals. We can develop and strengthen policies in a way that encourage families and residents to have a long-term vested interest in our community. Policies that can bring our community together in these tumultuous times, ones that embrace and champion our town as a larger family with common goals to help ensure a future for all who call Carver home. As a small town, we need to commit ourselves to work closely together with our representatives on both the state and federal level. It is through these avenues we are able to address the challenges and concerns we face as a small agricultural community in the 21st century. Please take a moment to check out Vote Shea for Carver on Facebook and support our local food pantry, Shane Gives Thanks, whose volunteer staff help many people in our small town. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you all at the town meeting Tuesday, April 24th at 6.30, and at town election Saturday, April 28th, both of which will be held at Carver High School. Hi, my name is Maurice Weidman. I am running at a post for the position of library trustee. I have been a resident of Carver for almost 19 years and have served on the Finance Committee and the Bike Path Committee. I use the Carver Public Library regularly and I feel it is a valuable asset to the town of Carver. In my position, I will give my best to serve the town and the library. I fully support the library and all its programs and I thank you in advance for your vote. Hello, my name is Robert Bentley and I'm running for re-election as town moderator. Why do I want to be moderator for yet another three years? Sometimes I ask myself the same question. But in the end, it comes down to my feeling that our New England style town meetings are the purest form of democracy there is. They allow you, the voter, to make your voices heard on any of the issues being discussed and to have an active voice in our town government. I want to help you truly experience the democracy that is town meeting. Upon taking office amazingly now six years ago, I posted a substantial amount of information regarding how town meetings are conducted and hopefully gave you a good understanding of the flow. In addition to, to a glossary of common terms, I spelled out the rules and gave you a guide on making presentations to the body. At town meetings, I follow the guidelines set forth in Town Meeting Time, a book which is written specifically for and about our New England style town meetings and supplement that with Robert's Rules of Order, which does not really address the conduct of town meetings. I try to be fair in recognizing all of the voters who wish to speak and try to make sure that everyone who wants to can put their two cents worth in. I have a set rule where no one person is allowed to speak another time until all of the others who want to speak have done so. I feel that I've done an okay job for you as moderator for the past six years and ask for your vote on the 28th. Thank you. <laughs>